Cruz, thanks for joining us and talking with us today. I'd like to start off with what you think China's ambitions are in the technology sector. So I think today's Chinese government's the, the ambitions in the, in the technology sectors is to achieve what we call this in the self-sufficiency uh, you know, in the mm -hmm. technology sectors. So in other words, China wants to build the competitiveness of a domestic company in the near future, in, in, the, in, the, in the future, and also and try to and the really use leverage technology to drive the economic transformation and the technology and also industry upgrading. So you know today's China is really in a very uncertain moment, mm -hmm. or we call the term uncharted waters. China is sailing to the uncharted waters because no one knows where China is heading to. So traditional economic model is no longer you know, workable, it's no longer sustainable. China tried to find a new driver for the economic developments. So therefore, there are strong needs and the arguments among all the experts, you know, they said technology or innovation can be leveraged as this next driver to achieve this in the transformation goal of China. But meanwhile, as we know, there's also strong, I think, the government security concern, which we can talk later. And the one China, China on the one hand, they develop technology and innovation. Meanwhile, they still want to address the security concern of the government. So how to address you know, this in the balance between security and the development goals is still a question that need to be addressed. What tools will the Chinese government use to achieve these goals, and does this differ from the past? Yeah, as we, a lot of people know, the Chinese government, the youth, we have the box of tools that drive this, the indigenous innovation before. So this is included as a preferential policies, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, like tax breaks, you know, for this in the uh, domestic company, and also they have uh, we call the R&D programs. They have a 863, 973 mega project, and then they also have some a lot of uh, subsidies, and also we call the hidden even hidden subsidies that are available to this domestic company. But I think today's in the, the situation changed a little bit. Because I think for a lot of time, because the government found out that traditional tool is, you know, it doesn't really work well, and then they just figure out some new tools. I think first of all, we have seen there's a lot of funding, you know, coming out. I think since in over the past years, this has included the cybersecurity fund and the uh, IC fund, I mean integrated circuits fund, and also in the cloud computing fund. But meanwhile, I think they also in the eliminate the traditional funding, you know, like in the A63 and the A73. These funds are no longer, you know, and uh, exist. So they just basically compile all the funds. And lastly, I think the government try to and uh, how to link to this in the uh, we call the laboratory research to the application in real world. I think this is the this is one of key theme in the thirty-five year plan. You know, they call the quality developments. Basically, to make sure that in the whatever they invent, develop in the laboratory or thing can be commercialized in the market. How can China reconcile this need for economic development with security concerns? Yeah, this is really tough questions, I think. And also, Chinese government also want to address this and uh, strike the balance between this and development and what they call security needs and also development, you know, and the uh, priorities. I think this in the, is first of all we need we need to really understand what specific area or sectors or issues you know that are relevant for the government most in terms of security concerns. Then we can identify and uh, what you know you then was an opportunity for a company. So for instance, we know some sectors or some issues are really and sensitive or and uh, even so that relevant for this ruling of a party. Then gonna be a really in the uh, a high, we call high risk area, you know, first like ideology, and everything re relating to ideology gonna be representative like the media. But however, in the in the country, I think there's uh, also other sector that are open for uh, for a lot of foreign input opportunities like environments, like in the cloud computing. I think this is the sectors we want to try to to and uh, achieve. I think. So I think it's still, and we have to look at this in the this in the uh, industry. I think closely, and then to and understand. So we 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 where is our opportunity and our risks. Mm -hmm. So how do multinational companies fit into the picture? Uh, foreign company actually, I think, and the, their experience are uh, really in the critical phase in China. You know, currently. So traditionally, Chinese government used to perceive foreign company as a, a we call the mentor or teacher 
especially just in the before and the just art right after China enters the WTO, because China think they can learn a lot from this global trading system. But however, things changed a little bit. I think since 2008, you know, when there's a financial crisis, at that time, I think all these major Western countries has been in in the challenge situation in crisis. China now, but however, China just step up, you know, rule out, rule out, and uh, full training, you know, stimulus package, so to save China, but also to save the world. So at that time, I think there's a little bit of shift in perception so among Chinese governments, you know, stakeholders. They think China can also do their own work, even save the world. And then, then I think in the, since 2013, there was a Snowden, you know, events. This is a critical, I think, issues. Also impact this Chinese government perception of foreign company. I think then from this 2013, there is a strong, I think, the sense of security and security among Chinese governments. Especially then the, the, the major issue coming out is the mistrust, I think, between China and also, I think, foreign company, especially in this in the tech sectors. Okay, thanks, Bruce. That was really interesting. Do you have any parting thoughts for us? Yeah, I think, in the, uh, as I mentioned, that foreign company really face a lot of you know, competition in China. They need to still and uh, stay in relevance in Chinese market. Therefore, they have to really look at the market carefully. So, where is really your niche market? You know, you have to put your best resource in this market, your best talents, and then you have to and uh, identify, look at this in the competitive landscape of markets. So, where is your opportunity? Where are the risks? Who are your stakeholders? How can you align your business with these stakeholders? So you have to and to have a holistic view. You have to have a deep understanding of this, not only this market, also the government. We call the system. So how they gonna implement the policies, and then you can develop a really thoughtful. We call this strategic, you know, strategy that can align your business with this the market and also the governments. So then you can you can achieve some uh, better achieve this business success in this market. Great, thank you. Thanks.